Apple Silicon is here and included in almost every single Mac. The two-year transition from Intel to M is essentially complete, and it has us all feeling like we finally, finally got to experience what we all felt was going to be the future of not only Apple as a company, but the personal computer itself. Apple continues to create products that many of us love, and it's expected that Apple will surprise and delight us with a few more products or product upgrades. The AR VR headset, an Apple car, Personally, I'm excited about what the future holds for Apple and its products, heck, even some of its software. But there's one Apple product I use on a daily basis that has me a bit flummoxed, a bit confounded, a bit unsure of what its future holds, and I know that many of you are feeling these feelings too. Apple is, of course, notoriously secretive with everything they do, and their devoted fans must feast on rumors to try to decipher what lies ahead for the biggest tech company in the world. And not only the company as a whole, but their video editing software, Final Cut Pro as well. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Welcome to the place where my friends and contemporaries gather to learn, explore, and sometimes gripe about Final Cut Pro, an app that has not only allowed me to earn a living over the last 10 plus years, but has allowed me to do something that I love to do, to teach, to share my knowledge, to help all of you level up your skills with Final Cut Pro right here on YouTube. But that love, as love often does, comes at times with a spicy little side of frustration, impatience, and what the are you doing, Apple? Will you please just let us, for the love of all things sacred, rename and lock the layers of our color grades? Will you please, please, please give us keyframing controls that leave us intensely satisfied rather than immensely frustrated? Will you please just, you know what? Let's not go there right now, because the list, of course, of begged for features, updates, and adjustments to Final Cut Pro is seemingly endless. It has a lot of us wondering, what the future holds for Final Cut Pro. So let's discuss exactly that. The future of Final Cut Pro. Now some think Final Cut Pro is gonna get the ax just like Aperture did back in 2015. Others think Apple's going to buy Blackmagic Design and combine the best of DaVinci Resolve with the best of Final Cut Pro to create one super NLE to rule them all. And for the apathetic lot of you out there, you think Apple's just gonna continue with business as usual with Final Cut Pro under the hood updates, bug fixes, stability improvements, and the occasional minor feature update, with zero chance of substantive, comprehensive updates that make it a no-brainer for hobbyists, content creators, and film TV professionals alike to use this incredibly polarizing app exclusively. I'd have to say that I'm probably amongst the latter. Those who have grown a bit apathetic as Final Cut Pro seems to feel more like an afterthought of our favorite tech giant. A fun little hobby they keep around because it helps sell Macs, even if Mac sales directly attributed to Final Cut Pro are a small slice of the overall Mac sales pie. But as that apathy creeps in and the time between substantial updates increases, some stupid part of my brain, heck, my heart swells with hope and positivity, convinced that something truly revolutionary, just one more thing. One more thing. Is right around the corner for Final Cut Pro. So we must ask ourselves what we can really expect to see from Final Cut Pro in the coming years, especially as yet another Apple event draws near where we're hoping to see an updated Mac Studio, the return of the 27-inch iMac and iMac Pro, and a new M-powered Mac Pro. Will we see a major update to Final Cut Pro to help promote these new Macs? Possibly to even promote new iPads? And of course, to satisfy those of us who are very, very devoted to Final Cut Pro. I think the majority of you doubt we will, and I get it. It's entirely possible Apple will frustrate us during the event by showing DaVinci Resolve working perfectly on a new iPad, with a colorist using their iPad as a reference monitor while working on an M-powered Mac Pro. For some of you, that makes the future of Final Cut Pro look bleak. So bleak, in fact, that a coalition of pro video editors from film and television wrote an open letter to Tim Cook urging him and Apple to be more proactive about updating Final Cut Pro to match its rivals, and to market and promote the software in a much more meaningful way. Apple surprisingly responded to this open letter by citing their recent efforts to, in fact, be proactive with Final Cut Pro. Overall, the response to the response was mixed. Many editors were, of course, happy to even get a response, but some frustration remained as Apple, again, remained vague about the future of Final Cut Pro. If you hadn't read the open letter and Apple's reply, I've got a link down in the description so you can check it out. But there is one sentence that brightens the bleakness for me personally, and here it is. While we believe we have plans in place to help address your important feature requests, we also recognize the need to build on those efforts and work alongside you 
to help support your film and TV projects and keep you posted on important updates. Now, what I really love about this is the part where it says to keep you posted on important updates. Apple last year with iJustine's video showed us dupe detection in a beta version of Final Cut Pro well in advance of the release, something Apple, as far as I know, has never done before with Final Cut Pro. So to me, this is encouraging and it's certainly indicative of Apple continuing to invest in the development and evolution of Final Cut Pro. Now, the current version of Final Cut Pro as of making this video in March March of 2023 is 10.6.5. So we're getting close to a 10.7 version, and I suspect Final Cut Pro 11.0 is in the somewhat near future because Apple recently dropped the Roman numeral 10 from the name of Final Cut Pro. For me, that means they're paving the way for version 11.0, but that could be a few years away. In fact, I really think it is. If we were to get a jaw-dropping update to Final Cut Pro, I feel like it would come in the form of a large amount of smaller updates that add up to a lot for most of us. I don't think we'll see an iPad version of Final Cut or some huge development with multiple editor and collaborative workflows. I don't think we'll see a massive overhaul that helps frustrated sound and audio mixers. I also don't think we'll see color correction tools that would make Blackmagic nervous. With a version 10.7, I could see Apple doing simple things like letting us rename our color grading adjustments. I could see them coming up with a way for us to edit the inside of a compound clip without leaving our current timeline. I could see a huge update to keyframing with Bezier curves and all the improvements we've been begging for. Maybe they use the neural engine cores to allow you to auto caption a video or auto remove objects from a shot. Maybe they add a feature that lets you auto transcribe an interview and then automatically add a transcript to a new transcript column in list view. And maybe they find a way to integrate Final Cut Pro with Logic Pro a little bit more so that audio mixing tools that post professionals crave could be much easier to use and access. These would all be welcome updates, and yes, I know the list for many of you is far longer than the few things I've just mentioned, but would these kinds of updates really change how film, TV, and content creation professionals feel about Final Cut Pro? I don't know that it would. I don't think these kinds of improvements are enough to satisfy the signers of the open letter I mentioned earlier. I think Apple would have to do a lot to seduce editing professionals into switching from Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve or Avid Media Composer to Final Cut Pro. They'd have to innovate on a level comparable or superior to the level of innovation that came with the magnetic timeline, the power of the metadata and Final Cut Pro's browser, the power of the timeline index, the ease with which effects and plugins can be made for Final Cut Pro. Apple would really have to come up with some things that truly blew us away, and I just don't know that they're dedicating the resources to accomplishing that in the short term. I think, honestly, they're perfectly happy with where Final Cut Pro is, because after all, what is Final Cut Pro and who is it for? Apple has long championed using the Mac to do things that were previously not possible. They were on a mission even back in the 80s to put incredible tools of creation and self-expression into the hands of everyone access to graphic design software, photography editing, music composition, and of course filmmaking. And access to these kinds of tools has been revolutionary for millions of people, especially for me. When I was a kid, we couldn't edit any of the VHS movies we made because digital video editing for everyday consumers just didn't exist. We had to edit our films in camera to make them feel even remotely similar to the movies and films we were watching over and over again after using our VCRs to record them off of TV. Now, you've got a mobile film studio in the palm of your hand with the iPhone. I can't even imagine what my brother and I could have made knowing we could shoot high definition 4K video with our phones and then edit them in iMovie if we had to on our phones. It took 30 years to go from carrying a VCR in a bag with a camera tethered to it to having it all on a single device that fits in your pocket. How can any of us be even remotely upset that we can't do more? Are we being greedy? Do we lack gratitude? Should we be more empathetic with Apple? It's hard because Apple has done so much to revolutionize our creative lives, and as a result, we all find ourselves wanting more, another hit, another fix of pure delight, pure surprise, pure magic. You can slide and flip down in the timeline, Things move out of the way. I know the need for another hit makes me shove all that gratitude down and get a little spicy when yet another Final Cut Pro update comes out with nothing terribly exciting to talk about. So again, I ask, who is Final Cut Pro really for? The Final Cut Pro website touts Final Cut Pro's use on Hollywood films, TV shows, and documentaries. And while you can create content at this level using Final Cut Pro, it has a lot of limitations that keep many professionals editing an avid media composer instead. Now, of course, it's not that simple. This is a complex and nuanced situation with 
many, many factors at play in Final Cut Pro struggling to gain traction in the high-end workflows of film and television. But if I really had to answer the question of who Final Cut Pro is for, I think it's easy. It's for everyone. It's for anyone who wants to make a video. Apple has made Final Cut Pro just advanced enough to attract some willing and adventurous film and television professionals, while at the same time keeping it simple enough for a 12-year-old to use. I don't know that a couple of 12-year-olds are going to easily tackle Avid Media Composer, Premiere Pro, or DaVinci Resolve, and I think that's what's at the real heart of all this. Apple wants Final Cut Pro to be just complex and feature-rich enough to attract the best of the best at the highest level of filmmaking, but they also want to keep it simple and streamlined so that kids and adults alike who own Apple products and have a passion for video storytelling can easily use this tool. I really think their priority here is empowering everyone to express themselves with video. It's not to be the industry standard for film, TV, and documentary editing in the Hollywood system. And this is part of what I think makes Final Cut Pro so frustrating to high-level professionals. They see the magic of the magnetic timeline and how stable the software is, how clean and simple it is, and they want more from it. They want more innovation so that they can feel that they're using the NLE of the future, not a 30-year-old app that's been reskinned or shoehorned into some modern features. At the end of the day, Apple's trying to sell hardware, and their software and services are tools that of course generate revenue. But from my point of view, one of their main functions is to get people to buy Macs, iPhones, iPads, and AirPods, and Apple TVs. So if we see innovation with Final Cut Pro, don't be surprised if it's less about adding a bunch of features that help with visual effects turnover workflows, or enhance color grading tools, and more about selling hardware. But at the same time, I think Apple is a mission-driven company that wants to empower people to do more, to make more, to create more. And Apple changing the world and making it a better place is what it's all about for us. We aim to put the customer at the center of everything that we do. It may sound a little corny or a little cliche, but you know that Apple's products have had a huge impact on the lives of so many of us, me included. But I do think Apple knows there's room to significantly improve Final Cut Pro without sacrificing its simplicity and accessibility. I do see Apple looking closely at collaborative workflows because so many content creators and independent filmmakers are working together to create videos and films. Pairing these innovations in collaboration with their iCloud services seems like a natural move as it not only generates revenue and brings more users into the Apple ecosystem, ecosystem, but it appeals to a wide base of customers instead of just a small portion of them. Again, it empowers their customers to do more. And like it or not, film and TV professionals working in the Hollywood system make up a very small slice of the Final Cut pie, and I think they still would if Final Cut Pro blew them all away and every last one of them switched from Avid to Final Cut Pro. They'll never outnumber the people using Final Cut Pro for their hobbies, corporate clients, independent projects, and of course making internet videos for YouTube, TikTok, etc. So where does this leave us? Let me sum it up. Apple is not going to delete Final Cut Pro, but Apple is also not going to make Final Cut Pro look and feel to the average user as daunting and complex as DaVinci Resolve or Avid Media Composer. They are going to continue to trickle out enhancements and improvements to Final Cut Pro, but it's going to take time because Apple wants to make sure they really nail those feature updates. They want to make sure that they've found that intersection between powerful and simple, advanced and elegant that Apple knows how to do so well. I think Apple is going to double down on drawing in more customers to their hardware by expanding Final Cut Pro in some uniquely Apple way to the iPad. They're going to better integrate pro iPhones with the software. They're going to finally tap into the neural engine power of the M chips and find incredible ways to integrate machine learning and artificial intelligence into Final Cut Pro to make tedious, difficult tasks take no time at all. I think they will add features and updates to Final Cut Pro to satisfy dissatisfied film and TV editors, but I think they're still going to rely on software developers and small businesses to contribute apps, plugins, and extensions to Final Cut Pro and its ecosystem. I mean, they even have an ecosystem section on the Final Cut Pro webpage. I don't think this approach to the app is going to go away. If anything, they're going to embrace it more and more, and part of that is because Final Cut Pro empowers developers and small businesses and visionaries to create new and amazing tools that work harmoniously with Apple's foundational products. So apps like Color Finale, Audio Design Desk, and PostLab can continue to innovate and evolve to better serve filmmakers and content creators 
using Final Cut Pro. That way the user can control how complex things are in Final Cut Pro instead of Apple just copying all of these things these apps and extensions do, cramming them into Final Cut Pro in their uniquely Apple way. I know it's frustrating to think this, but I think this ecosystem approach is a huge part of Apple's future for Final Cut Pro. And I think you'll see more of these apps and extensions come out as developers sign NDAs and get a look behind the curtain to work with the Pro Workflows team. And the Final Cut Pro team can continue to give users the option for how pro they make Final Cut Pro. Again, Apple wants a 16-year-old to be able to make a short film using an iPhone 15 and a 24-inch M2 iMac. And they want Hollywood and TV film editors to use Final Cut Pro if they want to, alongside an ecosystem of apps that give Final Cut Pro even more pro functionality. Final Cut Pro is the center of an empowerment ecosystem, just like the iPhone is the center of an empowerment ecosystem of apps sold in the App Store to let you do way more with your phone than the standard Apple apps can do. This is why at previous Apple events, Apple has touted how much money has been paid out to developers and how many incredible apps have been made to empower customers to do so much more than they ever thought possible. So things will improve. Final Cut Pro will get better, and I don't think it will ever be close to what we had with Final Cut Studio. It just doesn't make sense for Apple to do that. They made Final Cut Pro 10 because they wanted to compete in a future where they saw every single person having a high quality camera in their hand and a Mac in their bag and an intense, almost primitive desire to communicate using video and they wanted to create an app that allowed them to get as much of that market share as possible. For more than 30 years, the Mac has empowered people to create all kinds of amazing things from the personal to the professional. But they also wanted to know that they were creating foundational hardware and software that could serve an ecosystem of customer empowerment. iMovie and Final Cut Pro do exactly that, especially Final Cut Pro. So as frustrated as I can be sometimes with the lack of meaningful feature updates that improve my life, you cannot deny the fact that Apple has made an incredible tool that lets millions of people express themselves and communicate using video. That was the future of Final Cut Pro 10 back in 2011 when it debuted, and that, in my opinion, remains the future of Final Cut Pro today.